greeting on meeting that helps us all to see the day through. sad confession there's another big depression centered somewhere over Iceland once again hail and snow will be prolific and the wind will be terrific and, and the, the whole confounded country will be mad
Didn't I told you I was never to be disturbed? I'm very busy. But it's your daughter, sir. Oh, very good, sir. You know your way up, Miss Garland. Yes, thank you. I beg your pardon. Why don't you look where you're going? Why don't you? I've no time to argue. I'm a very busy man. mail, huh, Jimmy? No, complaints. What, more complaints? Yes, and here's another. Why don't you keep the corridors clear? Why don't you keep them clear yourself? I wasn't talking to you. I didn't say anything. Well, shut up. Okay. Well, it's all right, complaint. Come on. Uh, yes, and if you want something to complain about... Listen. And to put it simply and crisply, putative variation is commonly nothing but the recurrence of a recessive form or the emergence of some other segregant from a stock genetically impure. Oh, a foreign station. Foreign station, my eye. It's us, gently educating the masses. Or perhaps it's our idea of light entertainment. I'll ask the Director General if I ever see him. What, see the Director General? That's a good one. <laughs> I've been here for three years and I haven't seen him once. <laughs> yeah, and I've been here for ten years and I don't want to see him. <laughs> I might have known nobody ever sees the Director General. <laughs> 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 Okay. Now, Daddy, you promised to give me a job as soon as I'd learned typing. My dear, this place is simply full of young ladies who've got jobs here simply because they learn typing. Oh, well, then why not give me something else to do? I don't care what kind of a job it is. Nobody here cares what kind of a job it is. That's why we're all so competent. I could bring in some new ideas. New ideas. Don't you understand, my dear, that an organization of this kind must be run on strict military lines. We can't be bothered with new ideas. This idea of mine, it's revolutionary. Now, none of that, none of that. We don't want no communistic business here. A bloke got choked off the other day for hanging a red bathing costume out of a window. And the gentleman what was here before me, he got the sack for having a red snitch. A conk, a boco, a nose. Can't I see anybody? You can see me if you ain't cockeyed. I'll wait. All right, park it. But I'm going to lunch at... 13.30. What's that? What's that? You do the same as everybody else. Subtract 12, take away the first number you thought of, and ask a policeman. Anyway, the time to me is 13.30. Is that all you've got to do? Yes. Uh, no, no, I've, uh, I've got to wash my hands yet. Well, if you had my job, you wouldn't waste your time like that. Why, what do you do? Me? Oh, I'm only the hardest work man here, that's all. Complaints manager. You mean to say we get complaints? Six thousand a day. Six thousand a day? What do you do with them? File them for reference. So that if we do a thing wrong, when we do it wrong again, we know exactly how we did it wrong the first time. Oh, I see. It's a system. And there wouldn't be any complaints if there were anyone with any brains at the head of the group instead of that half-wit garland. That what? That nitwit. Oh, I thought you said half-wit. Have you ever listened to any of his programs? Only once. Well, don't blame me either. They're terrible. And they'll never be any better while they're arranged by Garland and his brass head yes-men. His what? Yes-men. Satellites. You know. Whatever rubbish the old mug suggests, they all say, yes, Mr. Garland. Oh, do they? Yes, they do. No wonder his programs are rotten. Just a minute. How would you improve things here? Well, I'd wash Garland out for a start. You nearly did. What? Uh, oh, would you? And uh, what about the yes men? Ask me some other time, old chap. I'm a very busy man. I beg your pardon? Why don't you look where you're going? Well, why don't you? I've no time to argue. I'm a very busy woman. Telephone. Answer it. Okay. Oh,
Hello? 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 Phone's dead. Hello? Yes? I'll tell him. No, I won't forget. Right? Goodbye. Wrong number. That's right, boys. Tidy the place up a bit. Here, you. Take a letter to Newcastle. The director general himself's made a complaint. Some film company's making a picture about the NBG and pulling his leg and he doesn't like it. <laughs> James. <laughs> Hello? Hello, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh. Hello. Hello, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. What's the matter? He wants to see me. Who does? The director general. Oh. Well, you can't go this way. What? You must be presentable. Here, yeah, let yeah. me fix you up. Oh, thanks, yes. Wonder what he wants that, to see me about. That's what I want, huh? <laughs> ah, the busy man. Here. Yeah. Has anybody been telling Garland what we said about him? What we said? Well, what I said. I say, I hope you're not going to get into any trouble. No, no. No, I shan't get into any trouble. You see, I am Garland. That's rather a good one of the, um, let me see, what was it? Oh, the nitwit. <laughs> Mr. Garland, I, 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 I thought... Come in. Ah, I understand the microphone in studio number five has broken down. Well, yes, Mr. Garland. And they need a new one. Yes, Mr. Garland. Uh, are these microphones absolutely necessary? Yes, Mr. Garland. Oh, well, you'd better go and buy one. Uh, yes, Mr. Garland. <laughs> That's one of the yes men. Yes, Mr. Garland. Now, let me see, why did I send for you? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, you don't think much of our programs, do you? I don't think anyone does, sir. I should think you could find better turns among the office staff than the people we use for our broadcast. Now, if you could spare me a few moments, I'd show you what I mean. How? By taking you around the studios. What, me go around the studios? Why not? There are no listeners there. Oh, well, in that case, perhaps I could go. Yes, Mr. Garland. I started to go once, but uh, I got lost. I found myself in the washroom. each time. One, two, one, two, one, two. I'm touching my toes. Are you? One, two, one, two, stop. Now take a deep breath. So. Hold it. Now let it out slowly. Like this. I feel better now. Do you? One, two, one, Two, one, two, stop.
faire et l'amour n'est pas toujours un poème. Le crois le bien. Je vais le cacher Car j'ai peur Que par malheur Il vienne à s'échapper Pas de trésor De mon soudain Touchez-moi Et avec moi Nothing, except they're not going to broadcast it. Oh, why not? Because they're not allowed to, sir. Who said so? You did. Did I? Yes, sir. You know, what this place needs is a young program director, someone about uh, 25. Oh, how old are you? 25. Yeah. No, 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 you're far too young. I should be 26 next year, sir. Well, of course, that would make you a little older. <laughs> and I suppose the new program director should be about five foot ten and have brown hair. Well, if you put it that way, sir. Yes, you didn't happen to be thinking of yourself, of course. In, in a way. I shouldn't have thought it. Well, why didn't you ask for the job? Because I didn't think you'd entertain the idea, sir. Well, according to you, I don't entertain anybody. Oh, well, yes, well, this time you're wrong, young man. I like your impudence, and I'm going to give you the job. You mean it, sir? I do. I'm going to try you out for a month, starting tomorrow, on one condition. Yes, Mr. Garland? But you don't say yes, Mr. Garland. Yes, Mr. Garland. No, yes. Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Garland. Boys, I've got some bad news for you. Bad news? Yes, you've all lost your jobs. Are we happy? It's all right, boys, you've got new ones. I've just been made programs director. That's oh, great. That's fine. Oh, boy, congratulations. <laughs> hey, <laughs> programs director. Hey, hey, sit down. What is this? What is this? Hey, you know, you gave me an awful headache. I didn't do it, he did it. Oh, no, he didn't. You did it. Don't tell me. Don't point your finger at me. Do you Who understand? Because I... Just a minute. Just a minute. Hey, hey. Oh, now, listen, listen, listen. Don't fool about. Starting tomorrow, the complaints department when it comes to the compliments department. Whee! Compliments. 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 Thanks, boys. I'll put in a good word for you with the Director General. Ah, you're just the person I'm looking for. Do you still want that job? Rather. You start work tomorrow. Oh, what do I do? You're secretary to the new program director. You'll need one. He's a very busy man. That's me. Yes, Roger. <laughs> oh! What are you doing here? I'm your secretary. How are you? Oh. Well, take a memo. Publicity department. Notify press that Mr. James Clare has been appointed deputy programs director. Cross out the word deputy. Uh, programs director of the National Broadcasting Group. Great things are expected of Mr. Clare, one of the cleverest of the organization's younger officials. Uh, not the cleverest. Well, yes, yes. No, no. On second thoughts, it might sound conceited. Now, let me see. Where was I? You were talking about yourself. Ah, yes. <laughs> Already, Mr. Clare has completed plans for revolutionizing radio programs by putting on a series of stupendous vaudeville broadcasts comprising a galaxy of world-famous theatrical and variety stars. You got that? All of it. Well, circulate a report for me. If anything uh, important turns up, I'll be in one of the studios. And when you finish typing that, I'll rush it through to publicity. I want to put it in the evening papers. Uh, very good, And Mr. don't Clare. bump into anybody.
What's that you're playing? Well, that's chamber music. Well, scrap it. From now on, we're going to have live programs. But we've been given orders yes, to... Yes, well, I'm giving orders now. Come on, give me something lively. All right. Take it hot, boys. <laughs> Claire, you seem to be a nice sort of a fellow. Yes, uh, yes, I suppose I am. You'd give somebody a chance to make good, wouldn't you? Well, yes, I suppose I would, yes. Uh, then you wouldn't mind listening to a, a girlfriend of mine? Not at all. It'd be a great pleasure. Even if she was the world's worst singer? What? Even if she's the worst singer in the world. Well, I'm not. Oh, thanks, Mr. Claire. You see, uh, she's cute and, and uh, she likes... Uh, I love... <laughs> Didn't you ever feel like that? No. Oh, be a good fellow. Give her a break. Yes, I should probably do that. Oh, thanks. Miss Carroll. Mr. Clare, Miss Carroll. Miss Carroll, uh, Mr. Clare. Miss Carroll. Oh, Mr. Clare. Oh, oh Miss Carroll. Are you ready? She's singing now. The bitter one. My only real, my only real reality. What the Americans call crooning. Public enemy number one. She can sing a higher note, but she's afraid her eyes will pop off. Everything, everything I need. Say Carol's name. I shan't forget. When she came here, she lived in the finest hotel. They heard her practice. <laughs> She lives in digs now. Next week, Victoria Station. But she's a nice girl. Is she? So they tell me. They tell. Shall I go into my dance now? No, no. You, you concentrate on your painting. <laughs> it's all yours. <laughs> Some old classic, then add a drop of rhythm. Beat out that four in the bar. Doing the new with the new.
Hello. Mr. Worthington to see you, sir. Who? Mr. Worthington. Gentlemen. Nice day again, isn't it? Turned out very nice. How are you? <coughs> I, um... Mr. Worthington? I, uh, pardon? Mr. Worthington? I, have I? I, I didn't know there were any order. I didn't know. Mr. Worthington, that's quite right. Yeah, he, he'd never miss one in his life. He, he drinks it out of a bucket. Did you, uh, see that story of mine? No, I did not. Yeah. Did you see these of mine? <laughs> I've got some lovely ones here. I've got, uh, very, uh, comedy sky scapes. There's one here about the young lady from Barking Creek. That's Who is bit, this? Uh, blue. That's the editor's son. He's learning the business. Yes. And that's, uh, that's my assistant, Mr. Uh, Piddledown, uh, pronounced Rompo. Nice uh, cut-off, uh, very uh, picture, uh, loved, uh, very, very nice. Talk to you, man. <clears throat> well, what are you going to do about this? Nothing. That's right. That's fine, isn't it? <laughs> that, let, 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 that lets me in, because... I can tell you a very, a very funny conundrum. Can, 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 can do it. Yes, yeah, all about, right. Um, Thanks very much. A bloke called Surely, going, Mr. Uh, Graham. Uh, off, eh? um, surely you realise that this is going to keep the people out of your theatres. Surely, Mr. Worthington, you realise that all these artists are under contract to me. Yes, that's right. That explains that. That puts it in a in a nut in a in a bag in a bag full. Because here's this bloke with this bird on top of this ladder, and they've got there's, there's about. Thank 50, you very much. Just he a said, moment. what about a, uh, uh, And do do you intend to stop these people from broadcasting? Oh, oh the, you can't do that because I, we, that's easy. We got you can have a mic, uh, mic shove uh, in my cow sissy. She'll be on the in the back of the you know in the back in the and you can put them um, shove them uh, on the uh, this uh, with the cow. You see, and it'll be there'll be there'll be nothing. There'll be, it'll be a simple, cow. What are you talking about? A be, cow. It'll be a uh, what cow? My cow sissy. You 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 wouldn't know anything about her. She, oh, I'm not in the not, habit of mixing with cows. Yeah, a big one. I say I'm not in the habit of mixing with cows. You're telling. I've seen you on the pictures before. I've, uh, anyway, you don't think it's a very funny, this uh, conundrum, Think you know, it what? You, you, oh, if, uh, you, you, oh. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> oh, I know you. you. You got a shocking makeup. I, you, you're, you're the fellow that wrote that uh, thing, uh, much ado about, uh, a lot of, uh, about funny, what's your name? Uh, of course. Yeah, now, listen, I'll tell you a funny story. <laughs> you'll scream at this. It's a funny thing. I, it, you'll rock with, you'll burst. It is, um, now, there's this bloke up this ladder, you see, with this, uh, with this cut uh, on the top, with this slice on the, the doings. And she, he said to her, he said, what about, he, he said, what, he, he, no, well, perhaps you're right. And it gives a kiss then instead. Come on, I'll see you later on. Somebody's got to have it anyway. I don't care. Uh, I say, uh, oi, you with a with a funny tit fat. Uh, would you like to hear a funny story? <laughs> this scream it is. It's uh, it's about um, a bloke up a ladder with a with a bur with a cut you know with a sl with a do it and uh, they're on top of this ladder and he he uh, they're, they're both a uh, big pun. Going to do what? Yeah, this fellow thinks I'm a contortionist. <laughs> scream it, silly ass. You quite finished? Uh, yes, please. Thanks very much. Yes. Well, now, Mr. Graham, what is your decision? This is just another publicity stunt. There's no need to do anything about it. Thank you. And you. Right. Good day. Good morning. Yeah. Oh, uh, Mr. Bluepock, uh, Mr. Graham, uh, I can tell you that funny story now if you'd like. Get out. I say, I say, this will never do. I can't have slipshod work like this in my office. These letters are full of mistakes, Miss... Uh, what is your name? Miss... Uh, Remington. Oh. Well, Miss uh, Miss Remington, you'd have to stay behind and type these properly before you go. Oh, but Mr. Clare, it's nearly five o'clock. That's not the way to get on in this organization, Miss Underwood. Uh, Corona, uh, Remington. We don't employ clock watchers. Come on, come on, Rip Van Winkle. Can't I see anybody now? No, you can't. 
I've been waiting here all day. Have you? Some of them's been waiting for months and months and months and ain't seen nobody, only me. And they won't. I'll wait. Oh, no, you won't. It's closing time here. An opening time across the road. I'm going to lubricate the tonsils. Come on, dopey. Come on. Haven't you finished yet? Have a sandwich. No, thank you. You must eat something. It's long past dinner time. I don't want anything. Miss Remington. I'm sorry I made you miss your dinner. You can go now. You needn't come in in the morning till 11. You can watch the rehearsal if you like. That'll give you my idea of what a broadcast should be. Here, ain't you listening to the rehearsal? No. Well, you ought to. It's going to be a great program. You know, one of these days, Mr. Clare's going to be the big noise in broadcasting. I'm not interested in Mr. Clare or his programs. Oh, sorry. Mr. Ted Ray and his violin. Don't play that bit. have been to other fellows. <clears throat> hear the rest of the program. <laughs> well, where's Mr. Frankow? Here I am. Oh. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, you mustn't smoke in the studio. Oh, well, um, yes. I was at Oxford, you know. Oh, oh really? Yeah. I was at Oxford, you know. Really? <laughs> I was at Oxford, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was at... Yes, uh, I know. Uh -huh. Oh. I'll start off uh, with a signature tune. All was done. I'm frightfully faithfully yours, terribly truly yours, very respectfully yours, Mrs. Humor and Co. Very sincerely yours, affectionately yours. I give us please your kind applause on Ronald Franco. It's the end of the signature tune. I think a little Eastern song now. <laughs> Ay, 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 ay,
Bam a dee ba ching a bam a ding a bam a dum ba ram a dum ba ching a. Sorry. We've got tired of our rank and station. We want to escape, but we can. Want to forget all civilization, go back to the primitive man. Life today, we all seem to bungle. Anyone know of a nice, clean jungle? Let's go wild like the heathen or the savage. Ah. Now let's find a village we can pillage, we can ravage. Oh. Let's work ourselves up to a mad, mad mood. Let's paint our faces with pigments crude. Let's take our clothes off and dance in the wood. Oh, let's go wild. Let's get a tomahawk and do great feats. Let's do a war dance with tom-tom beats. Shiver our shoulders and waggle our seats. Oh, let's go wild. Let's get some oil our fingers to anoint. Let's get a knife with a long, sharp point. Let's have some greens and a cut off the joint. Oh, let's go wild. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, see me do that in my bath. It's marvelous. Let's get away from all convention. Let's forget our manners while we can. Let's adopt the customs that we hardly like to mention, such as scalping the odd young man. Coconuts, banana trees, let's go and share them. Let's have a harem, or do you call it harem? Let's go wild like the heathen or the savage. Ah. Mm, let's find a village we can pillage, we can ravage. Oh, uh, let's sit in our haunches like they do in Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah, bala, yeah, 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 well, yeah, bala, yeah, yeah. Nasty postcard for nice gentlemen, you know the idea. <laughs> let's do jujitsu with anime Wong. Let's blow raspberries all day long. Oh, let's go wild. Let's get blotto tight and canned. Like Josephine Baker, we'll walk down the strand. Roses around our tummies and bananas in our hands. Oh, let's go wild. Let's start a fire and even prance. Let's do a mad diabolical dance. Let's find Hitler and kick him in the pants. Oh, let's go. Uh, yo, 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 yo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I see anybody, Porter? 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 Just see those. You don't get them for nothing. Now, I remember at the Battle of Pont de Terre Fritz. That's French for after you with the vinegar bottle. I was defending the cookhouse. I'd had nothing to eat for three days. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I became exhausted. I sat down on the stove. I didn't know at the time it was red hot. I got three more stripes for that. But not in the same place as these. Yes, but can't I see anybody yet? Don't be silly. They're all in the studio listening to Eve Beck. I'll wait. I'm not bad looking and I've got brains I never grumble when it rains I've got a first class family tree But no one to care for me I make my undies and I can cook once I even read a book I've got a load of sympathy But no one to care for me I'm asking fate Must I sit around and wait Say my reputation's great But no one ever asks me for a day It's not at all bad for the start, my boy. If you can continue like that, there's no reason why you shouldn't become permanent director. Oh, thank you, sir. Of course, the fat stock prices weren't mentioned once. Most are regular. But the, uh, the one about the young lady from Gloucester was... Uh... <laughs> 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 yes. Well, sir, I, I don't want to brag, but I wouldn't mind betting there'll be more listeners in tonight than ever we've had before. Yeah, I have a good mind to break my own rule and listen in myself. <laughs> If this goes on, we'll have to close down. So what's Graham doing, letting his stars broadcast? There'll be empty houses everywhere tonight. If you don't like it, you know what to do. Cordially yours. Another empty house, sir. Every manager's report's the same. That's just what I want. What? But... The more people who listen in tonight, the better. But I don't understand. Were well, you listening at five to eight? I mean, uh, 1955. <laughs> Awful, isn't it? You'll understand. 
There you are, you see. All this place needed was someone to put it on its feet. You aren't by any chance referring to yourself. Me talking about myself? <laughs> I ask you. Well, I suppose I'd better see that everything's all right. Do you want to come with me, little woman? No, thanks. Eight hours of the mastermind is about all I can stand. <laughs> Hey, what are you doing? Telling my fortune. Yeah? What does it say? It says I'm going to come to a violent end. <laughs> you know, I won't come to any violent end. Mm -hmm. I've got a fairy godmother watching over me. Mm -hmm. Have you got a fairy godmother? No, I've got a sissy uncle. Hey, lend me those cards. I'll show you a trick. Now look, take a card. And there's your card. No, it isn't. Yeah. What do you mean, no, it isn't? Here it is. You... Listen, take a card and put it back. And there's your card. Is it? Yeah. Well, isn't it? I don't know. What do you mean, didn't you look at it? No. Listen, take a card, look at it, and put it back. Have you looked at it? Yes. Five of clubs. Don't tell me what it is. I'm going to tell you. But I know. I know you know. Well, what are you going to tell me for? Because that's the trick. What is? I don't know the card. Well, if you don't know it, how are you going to tell me? Because I don't know. But I know. Yes, I know you know. But you don't know I know you know. I know you know I know. Take a card. Look at it. Put it back. Now shut up. And there's your card. Oh, you clever thing. <laughs> how do you do it? How do you do it? Don't do that. I'm positively thrilled. Oh, I know it's so exciting in my life. Show me, tell me how to do it. Show, show well, me. Well, look, it's easy. Yes. All you do, when they take the card, you keep your thumb there. Yes. Put the other pack underneath. And there's your card. Isn't it simple? I'm not to do it. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> your two sheets for tonight. Oh, oh thanks. Oh, Mr. Clare. Show you a trick. Take a card. And there's your card. Hello? Yes? What? Oh, but he's counting on you. Are you boys all ready to announce? Be with you in a minute. Just sorting out the old school tie? Yes, well, don't be late. I understand. If she'll be sorry, too. Yes, yes, I'll notify him right away. <laughs> Mr. Clare's office. But you can't let him down like that. All set, boys? Okay. Yeah, Jimmy. I suppose so. We'll send it out good and clear. It's going to be a great program. Oh, that's quite all right. I'm sure we'll have a marvelous broadcast. I'm sorry, too. Goodbye. Have you seen Mr. Clare? Seen Mr. Clare? Everything's all right. James Cockler Clare, the world's waiting for my broadcast and the artists are waiting for me. Have you seen Mr. Clare? Yes, just a minute. Which way did he go? He's all right. Thank you. Is Mr. Clare here? He's just gone. Who did she want? Mr. Clare. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Clare. The artists, they're not coming. What? Carl Graham has forbidden them to broadcast. But they've got to. We go on the air in a few minutes. Oh, but it's impossible, you see. 
They're contracted to Mr. Graham. Get me Carl Graham and jump to it. I might have known something like this would happen. That's what comes from letting this young nitwit bring in his new ideas. The operator says Mr. Graham has left town, sir. If Graham doesn't control our band, we can still use that. We're not going to. But I've got to put something on. You can put your hat on and get out. There'll be no broadcast at all. But, Mr. Garland, couldn't I announce a postponement? If you'll only give me 24 hours, I... There'll be no variety broadcast tonight, tomorrow night, or any other night, so far as you're concerned. Yes, Mr. Garland. That is all the news for tonight. There is one further announcement. Owing to a technical breakdown, we regret that we shall be unable to carry out our plans for tonight's big variety broadcast. However, listeners will hear tomorrow at this hour a novelty program greater than any ever attempted before. You're dismissed. I was only trying. You are very. You're sacked. You don't know a good idea when you hear one. Listen, you five foot ten, brown haired, twenty five year old busy man. Get out. All right. I'll go over to the BBC. They appreciate talent. Good night, everybody. Good night. A good job, too. One last broadcast is a step forward. I'm sorry he's got the sack, you know. He was a nice fella. He was getting too big for his boots. Why, well, I knew him when he didn't have a shirt to his back. Well, how did he manage about a hole for his collar stud? He's worked like the very devil to put this broadcast over. It wasn't his fault that the program fell through. But I didn't dismiss him for that. But for defying my orders and issuing that idiotic announcement. Don't you see? He was only being loyal to the organization. And protecting you. Rubbish. Besides, what can he do in 24 hours? I don't know. But at least you can give him a chance to show what he can do. Do you want the entire country to know that Graham's made a fool of the NBG? And its director general. Graham's out to break us. You know that. And you're playing right into his hands. Why, the only live wire in the whole organization is Jimmy. Jimmy? Mr. Clare. He's got ideas. He's got imagination. He's got ability. Yes, he's got brown hair and he's five foot ten. And he's apparently got you interested in him. Oh, me? I hate him. He's a conceited, arrogant little pup. But he's loyal. And he gets things done, which is more than anybody else around here does. Oh, yes, sir. Really, madam. I can't. I hope you touch her. What you need is military discipline. Oh, go on, say something. All right, oh. all right. Yes. I'll give your arrogant little pup another chance. He's got 24 hours in which to make good. And if he doesn't, he won't be 26 next year. The human dynamo seems to have slowed up a bit. Yes, I knew I could rely on you for sympathy. I'm sorry, Miss Remington, if I've cost you your job. Well, I thought you were the one that was fired. You heard what Garland said. This office is to be shut from now on. If I hear of another job, I'll let you know. Thank you. I'm afraid I've been a bit difficult to get along with. Oh, that's all right. Well, goodbye. You're not leaving the NBG, Jimmy. But Garland fired me. He's changed his mind. He's decided to give us another chance. What do you mean, us? Well, you don't think you can do it alone, do you? Now, let me help you. That's awfully nice of you, Miss Remington. Call me Joan. That's still nicer of you, Miss Rem... Joan. It's quicker. And more business-like. Well, come on. Where's that talent list? Let's get going. 
We're going to give Theatre Trust the battle of its life. I don't think we shall hear much more than Mr. Clare. All his variety broadcasts. Why, what do you think the NBG will do now? Do? They are licked, and they hate to admit it. I say, uh, Goldilocks, any chance of telling me that funny story? I hate to admit it, Joan, but we're licked. Graham's got every available star under contract. Oh, well, what can we do? Well, I feel like going out and getting drunk. Oh, you'll do nothing of the sort. You're coming out with me and get something to eat. Come on. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure. Oh, I must see somebody, anybody. Well, here you are. Have a look. Listen, I don't know who you are, but if you work here, you've got to help me. I'm sorry. It's very late. Another time. The world's been waiting for my invention for years. Oh, you're one of those, are you? It'll start a new year I am broadcasting. Yes, it always does. It'll revolutionize entertainment. There's millions in it. Millions. <laughs> you want to make a fortune? Well, who doesn't? Come with me. You'd better humor me. You think so? Greatest thing I've ever seen. And it's so simple. <laughs> How many have you got of them? About a dozen. Well, Astor wants all you can deliver, but I must have them today. Oh, leave it to me. I can't understand you inventor chaps. You've got the greatest discovery of the age. <laughs> Why didn't you tell somebody about it? <laughs> oh, well. Well, it looks as if our broadcast will come off after all. What will? With the professor's invention, of course. Without stars, I suppose. Now leave that to little Jimmy. The mastermind's beginning to work again.
We are not quite what we used to be. When we were in our prime, we are not quite what we used to be. But our charms, they are still sublime. Perhaps it's through sticking to our, to our duty that we've been and lost quite a lot of our beauty. Or perhaps it's them beers that we had on the cutie. We are not quite what we used You stay here and talk to them, and I'll go after him, the little one. Right. Look here, girls. You're funny. You're great. You're stupendous. How'd you like to broadcast tonight? Broadcast tonight? tonight? How much? Well, there'd be no fee, but look at the advertisement. Oh, no money. Different. Well, how about a couple of quid each? A couple of quid? Oh, I'd do more than broadcast for that. I'd be outcast for late. <laughs> it's a bet, then? It's a way. Right. Good girls. What are your names? Nelly. Nelly. Lily. Nelly. Lily. Right. Be here at eight sharp. <laughs> Lammy, the first for years. What do you think of that? All I can say is strike my old man's aerial. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Why not? He mightn't like it. Do you want to hear them? Well, uh... Yes, that's right. I say, what are you doing to that piano? 
Yes, I... Oh, I'm tuning it. Well, who told you to tune it? Yes, that's right. I'll get it done. <laughs> oh, you, of course, you wouldn't know me, would you? No, I'm Claude Dampier, you see. I'm the vice deputy tuner for the NVG people. The other fellow couldn't come, so of course I had to do it for him. Would you mind holding that a moment, if you go? Good heavens, what, what was, what was that? The, um... Is this piano available? Oh, did you put the lid down? No, no. Is, I said, is this piano available? Yeah. Huh? Available. Be available. I have no idea what make it is. No, I've never no. bothered. No, no, never bothered to look at that. The uh, point is, can one use it? Well, it depends what you want to use it for. Well, to play on, of course. What do you mean, music? Well, of course. Oh, I see. Well, what kind of music? Hot or chamber would you want it for? It doesn't matter what kind of music. The point is, I want to use it tonight. Uh, oh, you, you could never be able to use it tonight. No. Well, what's wrong you with see, it? Can, can I help you? Well, of course, I mean, it's a very big job for one person. If you wouldn't mind helping, it would be yeah, helpful help. even not. Yes. Could you just help me out with this? I don't know what's how that managed to get down at all. It's just a question of getting that, and we'll prop that up there. Oh, I see. Dash it all. Couldn't you see that that was going to happen? That's absolutely... That makes it more difficult for me, you know. Now, you see, the trouble with this is, uh, all these things have got to be fitted in like teeth, you see? Now, and you'll see exactly, I, I know exactly what's wrong. Now, you'll notice those two notes don't, now that's either def definitely sharp or flat, isn't it? I mean, you do that. I say, yes. is this the first piano you've ever tuned? Yeah. No, good heavens, no. I've done this to several pianos. And I'm always satisfied, it always finishes up all right. You see, now there's something wrong, still there's something very, very wrong with it. Oh, I see what it is. Yes. How the hell, now, did you see where that came from? No, I did not. No, but it goes, it must go somewhere. I mean, it wouldn't be there for Would you mind passing with a small spade in there? No, mind. Not at all. Uh, yes, oh, I think you'll have your piano tonight, definitely. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Come up and see me sometime, baby, anytime. Oh, no, I want to be alone. Why do I get only this bubbly something? Why can't they leave me alone? I'll take you home, Greta. I'm falling for you, baby. I'm crazy about you. I tell you. Ha, cha, cha. Cha, cha. There's a man in here. Where is he? No, that wasn't a man. That was me. It's no good you trying to shield him. Where is he? Oh, you know, <laughs> I'm so very happy to be in your wonderful country, you know, <laughs> to see all your beautiful women, yes, <laughs> they remind me so much of Paris, you know, <laughs> yes. That's, that's very good. Can you do anything else besides imitations? Oh, Mr. Clare. Oh, well, Miss, Miss, uh, Miss, uh, the... Miss Beryl Ord. Oh, well, Miss, Miss Ord, can you, can you sing? No, but I can give you a recitation, as I imagine various stars would recite it. Oh. Well, go ahead. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yes. Hello, everybody. This is Mabel Constant Euros with Grandma Buggins calling to you. Now, come on, Grandma. I've got ever such a nice little recitation to recite to you. Oh, you will like it, really. It's called Excelsior, you see. The shades of night were falling fast. It's through an alpine village past to you. Are you listening, Grandma? Who bore me snow and ice so banner? Oh, well, if we take your nose out of the battle, they are playful, aren't they? With a strange device, Excelsior. Now, don't you think that's lovely? No, I don't. And you get more ridiculous every day. Get away from me. You make me sick. Now, here comes one of those little American girls you see on the talkies. What does little Elfie call them? Oh, I know. Cuties. Hello, everybody. This is your little Hopsy Topsy calling you from our brand new radio station in little old San Francisco. Oh, gosh, you don't know what a big kick it gives me to be talking to you tonight. First of all, I want to tell you about a perfectly swell guy called Excelsior. <laughs> and was he swell or was he swell? I'll say he was swell. <laughs> the shades of night were falling pretty fast. A thrown alpine village past the youth of Bournemouth Snow and Ice Banner with a strange device. Excelsior. Don't you think that's the cutest little thing that ever happened? Oh, good night, everybody. Good Nice. Hello, everybody. This is Jimmy Sasso to Rene Connolly. What do you know about it, folks? What do you know about it? Hatcha. I was gonna recite to you, but them things took the words right out of my mouth. 
Katya. I want to tell you about my big romance. I've fallen in love. Fallen in love. I'm a tool. That's what I am. Putty in the hands of a beautiful thing. That's what I am, putty. I've fallen in love with the biggest thing since Carnera. May West, Katya. Oh. Well, you got the idea, Jimmy. Oh, so you're falling for me, Jimmy. Well, what a wise guy you turn out to be. Oh, baby, do I educate him? Do I educate him? Well, uh, so long, honey. I got a heavy date, but uh, don't forget, hang around. Hang around. Well, was that all right? Well. Oh, you would give a girl a chance to make good, wouldn't you? You mean yourself? Why, of course I do. Oh, please, let me broadcast. How much? anybody in one of these or one of these uh, would you like to uh, no what? I say what's your name uh, Stanelli how cold the night is how sweetly sings the nightingale Somebody's driving up the road. Faster. 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 Come on, faster. Oh, stir your own Christmas pudding. I'm going to mess about it. Somebody shut the door. Somebody's coming up the stairs. Somebody's coming up the stairs. Hey, where are you? Come out of there, will you? Point. Point, come on. Get up. Somebody's coming up the stairs. That's a horse. Now, this is a pony. This is a horse. Oh, do you make me mad? Why, you come here and ask me to get your job, and what do you do? You let me down. All the time, you let me down. One of these days, I'll lose my temper with you. And I'll take a hold of your arms and break them over there and throw them over there. Then I'll get a hold of your legs and break them over here and throw them over there. Then I'll get your body and tear it apart and throw it out there. Then I'll get your head and crush it right up like that and throw it back there. What do you think of that? That's me all over. <laughs> Come down here. Come on down. Hot dog. Hot dog. Now, listen, your temper, Haver, your te you know, on the square, you're the plainest and the most unruly man I ever saw. And that's the last straw. Oh, gosh darn it. Oops. I hope mm. I get an axe the next time, boy. Oh! I've discovered two marvelous turns, but believe me, I had a chase all over the building to find them. Oh, Jimmy, you're wonderful. Oh, thanks very much. I found three attractions without leaving the office. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that inventor chap, he should have been here hours ago. But Mr. Clare wants to see me. Yes, I've heard that one before. No, no, you don't understand. No, no, I don't. I'll wait. Hello? Yes, Mr. Clare. This is the sergeant speaking. Who? Uh, Mr. Bird. I'll see, sir. Uh, I, I, I'm a bird. Yeah, not the kind of bird I fancy. Go on, old cock. Up off. No, no, no. A bird. Algernon. 
Oh, I can prove it if I if really, I honestly can, if I can only oh, the time. I've got one somewhere. You don't say, wait a moment, baby. Yeah. Why didn't you say so before? This place is absolutely crawling with talent, including the two char ladies who come in to oblige. That's one in the eye for Mr. Graham and his theater trust. It's six in the eye from him, and it's only beginning. By the way, you've got rather nice eyes. Do you know that? Oh, come in. Ah, there you are. Good morning. We'll have to work fast. Do you think you can have everything ready by 8 o'clock this evening? Oh, I'll do my best. That's the spirit. Joan will see that you have every cooperation, won't you, Joan? Why, certainly. For you. Hello? Oh, yes, right away. Joan, see that Mr. Bird has everything he wants. I've got to go up to Garland's office. Right you are. It's a perfect scandal, sir. The operator fellow refused to take me up in the lift. Said it was beneath his dignity as a broadcasting star. Charwomen, indeed. The man's a raving lunatic. Is this a wireless station or an asylum, sir? Why, is there any doubt? It's a wonder he didn't call on us to do something. A fat lot of good that'll do. Ever since I've been here, you've done nothing except sit on your office chairs and complain. But, Mr. Clare, you must admit that this uh, talent you've engaged is, to put it mildly, extraordinary. Of course it is. That's what I wanted to be. Extraordinary. Something different. But Charwomen, it's preposterous. Have you heard them? No, oh, and I don't wish to. No, well, I have. And they're great. And that goes for every act that we're televising tonight. You're what? Televising. I'm sending out tonight's program in television. What's that? Television. The listeners will see the artists. But you can't invite all the listeners here. Why, there wouldn't be room. Well, impossible. It can't be done. Ridiculous. Unheard of. It's all bunkum. What are you going to do? Sit back and let Graham put us out of business? He's got us with our backs to the wall and we've got to fight. I get, sir. The boy's right. Gentlemen, this is war. find a proper site. And don't forget the show begins at 8 o'clock tonight. And don't forget the show begins at 8 o'clock tonight. Well, have you seen Mr. Clare's latest effort? So everybody's got to go into the parks to be disappointed. But he can't put up loudspeakers in public places. You're right, he can't. And what's more, he's not going to. Well, how are you going to stop him? Watch me. Give me the superintendent of police. Hello. Is that the superintendent? This is Carl Graham of the Theatre Trust speaking. Have you given permission to the NBG to erect loudspeakers in the parks tonight? Thank you. Goodbye. That'll teach him. What a day. Now, well, how are we getting on? Five o'clock and everything running magnificently. We'll do it yet. Oh, I'm so glad. Not half as bad as I am. If this broadcast comes over tonight, the NBG will have you to thank for it. Oh, Garland will probably take all the credit. He's not such a bad sort when you know him. I mean, he's, he's probably very kind to his family. Oh, I just hate to think what sort of a family he's got. 
Men with long beards and spinsters with pince you know. <laughs> Anyhow, nothing like you. Really? Of course, they couldn't be. Why, I could never have put this show on tonight if it hadn't been for you. Jimmy, that's the first time I've ever heard you compliment anyone. But yourself. Well, up to now, I've never met anyone worth complimenting. Is that all you've got to do? Hello, we were just talking about you, sir. I didn't engage you to talk, young man, but to do things. Is this broadcast going on tonight, or isn't it? Now, don't you worry, sir. In a few hours, our friend Mr. Graham won't know what struck him. Come here. There'll be so many people in the public squares, you'll think Garbo's making a personal appearance. Who's Garbo? They haven't got a permit to do this. Why don't you stop them? Well, why don't you stop them? Why don't you mind your own business? It is my business. I'm Carl Graham, head of the Fifth of Trust. Oh, stick around then, and you'll learn how to put on a good show. <laughs> What's the time now? 10.45. Ten forty-five. Say it's going to be all right, but is it? Well, everything's very well organized. Organized? Uh, my dear, you don't know what organization means. Why, I got this place so well organized that I... But I... you've organized all the entertainment out of it. <coughs> well, if Mr. Clare lets me down, it'll be the last time I shall let you talk me to it. Oh, but he won't let you down. I've never seen anyone work so hard as he has over this. Why, he's... He's, he's a conceited little pup. Don't you dare call him that. Told him who you are yet? No. He's... How's this for organization? I said I'd have those lorries equipped in time and they're on their way. Now, number one's right. Number one. Four is okay. Number four. Number twenty-four is caught in a traffic jam. Tell him I've got to get to. Funny boy's okay, sir. Good man. Ladies and gentlemen. The National Broadcasting Group proudly presents the first time in the history of radio, outdoor television in color. And now for the big show. Stop, listen, and look. Our program opens with Black Shadows, featuring Alberta Hunter and Joyce Richardson, with a supporting company of over a hundred. Ladies and gentlemen, Black Shadows.
People regard me with hatred Like I was covered in sin Must I appear to be fated All just because of my skin Black shadows seem to be haunting me In every place they creep around me I'm in disgrace like chains they bound me Lord, can't you make them hatred like I was covered in sin must I appear to be fated all just because of my skin Don't you think we'd better be getting back to the studio? Don't be silly. This is much more important than broadcasting. What's much more important than our broadcast? This is. Well, I say, confound it, sir. How dare you? Do you know who you're kissing? Rather. Yes, but, 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 but she's my daughter. I know, and I still love her. And what's more, she's going to marry me. Well, I think you might have asked me about that. Oh, didn't I? Oh, I forgot. But we are going to be married. Oh, are we? But don't you think... No, I don't. The finale's just started, Mr. Yes, Clare. Yes, 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 thank you. But you are going to marry me, aren't you? No. I'm going to watch the finale. Now look what you've done. And now Teddy Joyce and his orchestra with Peggy Cochran, the Carlisle Cousins, Fred Cunningham and a bevy of beautiful girls in There's No Excusing Susan. <laughs> Now the strangest girl in our town is Miss Susan Brown For she never seems to worry and the boys don't hang around But it's clear to see the reason why Susan's not pleasing For unless you're in the dough, she'll soon tell you to go Susan, all the love when she's been losing, 
good amusing Susan, for she just keeps on refusing. No one knows who's out or who's in with Susan Brown. She's the particular kind, not many young men have kissed her. She is not inclined to be just a Mrs. to a mister. So unless we care, she'll use you. Give a call for choosing Susan, cause she knows her peas and choosing. Boys just can't leave the girl alone. They know she has a heart of stone. That's made Susan wrong. <laughs> Many young men have kissed her. She's not too bad to be a missus to a mister. So unless with cash or oozin, give a poop of choosin' Susan. Cause she knows how he's and choosin'. break off our engagement. Jimmy, come back here, you fool. 